What is up everyone and welcome back to another Lost Skies Skywatch update cover from Bosa Games. At this point, the devs have reached their 20th update and are hunkering down in preparation for their next big milestone update in the upcoming future. But for now, they have shared a small bit of content for the Skywatch that includes a variety of further designs from previous concepts and a handful of new additions. While of course not trying to reveal everything about their newest additions. To start off, we do begin with the team's UX designer, Ellen, who has been working on what appears to be an updated look at the compendium. Here we see the different items categories and acquired knowledge formatting in the book, which now seems to have actual designs in the empty slots and item images and descriptions, along with more detailed icon art on the side panel. In addition, the team's principal game developer, Tom Jackson, has been developing some energy walls and VFX. Where the devs provide a small video gif showing off the player grapple to an object above who is swinging and walking along the wall while shooting it where there are some detailed electronic effects and what appears to be some kind of light based reactionary effects as the body of the player is close to the wall itself and even individual pulsating energy spots that form at any place the wall has also been shot they mentioned that this will be something that you can use in the island creation process. I can only guess this means also for players to use as well in their own island development, which would allow you to potentially block off different areas of interest, which could also possibly work as a form of glass, effectively setting a visual location where the player could see into a puzzle structure or layout for a building to either tantalize the player by showing off the given loot area that they can't immediately get to, or use it as a visual point to help the player figure out where different key areas, keys, or unlockable things that they need to find a way to are. This holographic wall also seems to have a more electronic and almost grid-like cyberpunky feel to it, which is very different from the golf style designs that we have seen in previous shipyard bubble related stuff. Next up, the team's principal artist Andy Green has been hard at work for the game's wind implementation, where they provide one more small gif showing off the visual windy slipstreams overhead and their reactionary grass movement from the player's clothing as well, where in this example you may notice the character's black cape slash scarf that seems to fold over in the same visual direction for that windy stream. The devs have also been working on the previously concepted square and sphere physics puzzles, which are planned to be utilized with the recent Atlas lifters and the player's grapple ability to levitate and drag said objects into their respective holes for unlocking possibly new areas or new devices. Similarly, the team has decided to entirely revamp previous puzzle assets and even updating all of the Saborian and wooden textures and shaders, which now seem to have a more yellowed out and almost rusted look with a more green electronic glowing design for different loot chests and enemy defense turrets. In addition, the wooden pieces seem to have taken on a much more decaying look as well, to give the impression that much more time has passed. They do also provide a handful of close-ups for the revamps of the Saborian drone puzzle retexture, where you can see all the little intricate and electronic details in very high quality, which includes slightly roughed up edges slash scratches to give the indication that, again, they've been through much use from time and wear. You can even see enough detail such that the green light being emitted reflects off of the inside of the three drone plates, which adds that sense of realism. They also give a close-up of the Saborian chest retexture, which seems to only have slight modifications from last time, mainly just including slight changes to the number of glowing mechanical pieces on the actual storage unit. They next mention that Claudia has been working on the second region development for the game which will be more autumnal in nature, where they provide a beautiful video of what seems to be the in-game camera mode flying through different environment and structures, and from what I can see and only guess is entirely new looking stone architecture that has a beautiful almost gothic style silhouette, which in my opinion looks stunning, especially with the light refracting off of the floating air particles. In addition, they also give us an example for a region 2 work in progress island, which has many of those same autumn-like accents to the trees and grass on the left there, and as the same placeholder model that was mentioned for the Gaul Arc that we've seen once before. I would imagine in this sense that they either haven't come up with a finished model for it yet, or don't want to show it off for this update. 
With this new region, the team has also made some fresh new rock assets that the players likely can use in their islands, which from what I can tell are stalagmite type rock formations in larger varieties and even different floating rock assets as well. Lastly, in this second region, they also have one photo showing off the color palette up close with this sort of yellow tinted grass and red trees with the red colored bushes and foliage as grass fodder. This nicely transitions into the next edition, that being the early work in progress wind wall that some of you might likely remember from Worlds Adrift, where in the previous game, there were different weather walls separating the world into different regions of the game. And while they don't show any close-ups or mentions of the internal functions, likely not to spoil the additional content, they show one very pretty photo of it far out, where it seems the wind wall is just barely peeking out and bordering the top edge of the frame in the distance. Another strange thing I also did notice in this photo was the clouds below, where it appears to be some kind of green cloudy mist that we've never really seen before. While it's too hard to guess what this might be, I thought I might point it out to allow you guys to take a guess at what it could be. The last piece of content from the devs is more work on enemies, the first of which is more stuff being done for the drone NPCs. The concept work was done by Jonathan Betts, and the 3D model work is being completed by a man named John Warner, where it seems we get an awesome selection of different cool looking drone proposals, which look very alien in nature, and even a few that give me a similar vibe to the Mr. Handys from some of the Fallout games. There are also some more heel drone exploration concepts for different types of cool green electronic looks, with some taking on a more vertically tall oval shape, and even some drawn up with new healing animations and VFX that the robot could perform while doing this action, where some take on a sort of pulsating ball-like structure, and one of which seems to create some kind of green healing bubble, which might be some kind of shielding ability for the drone to protect from different kinds of damage, but that again is not exactly clear either. They also share another photo for the early concept of the attack drone, which seems to carry a bit different of a design nature than the previously seen models, where it takes on a much wider base structure with some having dual mounted guns on the sides and extra metal plating for the drone's defense. All of which they mention are, again, still work in progress and not the final product, but nonetheless look very awesome as an initial preliminary design. They do, however, provide one picture of the heel drone in an actual 3D model from where the drone uses more flowy drawn alien-like designs on the yellow sections of the heel bot, which look very awesome and interesting, but interestingly don't use any gall designs, maybe even indicating potential for unknown civilizations that may be revealed in the future. The last thing we have for today's Skywatch is the Island Creator Showcase. This month the team is sharing Ugly's work yet again. This one is called the Saborian Armada, which while technically not an island per se, the team was blown away by these awesome ancient skyships that Ugly made with the Island Creator. Ugly definitely will have some plans to use these designs for ruined skyships on different future islands, so the team cannot wait to come across these in the future islands. Where some of these ships have an absurd amount of detail, some of which even use different turret assets as weapons for the ship itself, including some with very cool self-made engines, and even what looks like the propellers on the far left ship, which seems to take after the V-22 Osprey area vehicles that you might see in some of the Avatar movies. And that is all the devs have shared with us this time around, and while the content was definitely lighter than usual, from what they have shared, it seems the team likely has been putting most of their time into the next upcoming update milestone, whatever that may be, and only time will tell what that is at this point, frankly. So I do hope you all have enjoyed, and like always, have a beautiful rest of your day, boys. Peace.